Hello and welcome to LearningEngineer.com where we engineer learning for efficiency. My name is Michael Langdon and today what I want to do is talk a little bit about animating text in HTML5 using the canvas um, tag element. And as you can see here I've already built this. It's animating. You can see the text is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you need the uh, code for this, you can just go to my site at learningengineer.com and it's animating text in Canvas. It's right here. And if you click on this, it also shows you um, where I got the idea from. Here's another version. Um, it's I got the idea from Ruby on Tails, which is an example of it. It's here and he did it with particles. So you can see his particles one and I did mine with text. That's how I changed it. I teach writing and so I'm very interested in animating text and words and so on. So that's what I built here from that other inspired website. And so what we're going to do is look at the code here now. And I know I've had people say that they would like me to type in the code while this is going on. The problem is, is that people don't want to sit through a 20 minute video. So I want to make these as short as possible. So again, I'm using Aptana Studio and I just open up an HTML template. Uh, to do that in this is just simply right click new from template. You come down to HTML and you can see there's one for HTML5 template and that's literally what this is. What I did is I put in a quick style tag right here in the header. Okay, canvas one is the name of the canvas. Uh, I put a dotted border around it and then just made sure the background color was black. And then I zoomed out a little bit. I like to work with basically 1280 by 720 and then zoom in and out. That's just the way I like to do it. So, and then we have all of this meta stuff, which comes with the template, actually. So, you can just ignore that. And what we want to do is go down to the body here. And here we have our first, the, the canvas element. It's very simple. Canvas ID, canvas one, and so on. And then we have, we start our script after it. And that's because it has to be there before it can be initialized. So, the first thing we do is get the element, the canvas, right there. And then you have to do this, get canvas context. You have to do this every time. They have examples where you can kind of use an if statement to make sure that the API is there, but um, this works fine. I use Google Chrome and it has it in it. And then what I need to do is I need to set the canvas dimensions and I use these variables in more than one place. And so then I set the canvas height and width. And then what we have to do is make particles. So as you can tell, this isn't from me. This would be words. So we need to create an array of words. And what I did is I have 10. And this is where you set that. So this is how many words we're going to make instead of particles. But as you can see, particles is still there as the variable. And there isn't much to this. We're just pushing them into the array. And then we want to create multiple particles. So then we create the particle and what we do is again, we're setting the X and Y somewhere between the width and the height. So basically what this is, it sets the X at a random number times the width. And the random number is always below one. So you're always gonna end up with a number that's going to be below the total width. And the same thing with this Y right here. And the reason why we can use this is because it's just going to attach to the words as they come out. So this is just a generic statement for whatever this is run into, use it. Okay, and so we can use this generic th this when we're using a function to create something. So and then of course uh, the var x and the var y are set to the height and the width. And then we're going to actually animate these particles. And this is a little tough at first because text in Canvas is a lot different than just plain old circles or arcs. So what we do is we start with 4t. And this is the particles length. So this is how many particles we've pushed. We've pushed 10. So there's going to be 10 here. Okay. And you can see here, here we have p equals particles. And then t represents the number of particles in the array. So this is like an array item. 
So it's just, again, it's a variable. And then we have a variable called text theme. And so what this is, is it's all the colors that we're going to use for our words. And you can add as many as you want. Generally, you want about one per type of text. Okay. And then the same thing with our text fonts. So you can see that I have a whole list of them. And these are on my computer, so you might not see the same ones that you saw in my video. It could be different. I'm, I don't know how to load fonts yet. I'm going to be working on that. So then we have a size, and then it's just a random times 100 plus 10. And then we have the font size, and I just set it all to 85. And you can't really use size for that because it's not going to work. Because if you do that, then it's randomly changing the size of the text. And, and so it won't animate right. Then we have a line width of 2. That's the outside of the text. Then we have a stroke style, which is text theme. So it's a color. And then it's whatever T is at the time. So if we're at the first one, it's going to get the first color. If it's at the second one, it's going to get the second color. If it's the third one, it's going to get the third color, and so on. And then since I don't want the same color for the stroke, for the shadow, I just put minus 1. And then shadow offset, I don't, I don't want them offset. I want it to glow, so that's why I have a large shadow blur, and I have 0. So if you want it to glow, that's what you would do. And then the fill style is, again, the color, the text theme. I guess I should have put text color. It would make more sense. And then I did a plus one so that it's not the same color as the stroke. So the outside of the text is going to be a different color than the inside of the text. And then we have what we want the text to be. So it's learningengineer.com. And then I put a px and a py and a px, py, because that's going to, the velocity is going to animate that. OK. And I believe that that was up here. Yeah, it was right here. This is the velocity. And so it's, again, a random number assigned in there. It's going to take that random number between 0 and 1, and then multiply it by 20, and then minus it from 10. And then, again, the stroke text. OK. So one is fill inner, one is outer. OK. And then we're going to use our velocities. And then what this does is it prevents it from moving out of the canvas. And initially, these were set to 50 when it was the balls. But because the text is so wide, I increased it. You can even increase it more. And you can experiment with that. And then what I needed to do is I have two set intervals. I have one that draws them and then one that clears them soon after. And this is the clear function here. And, and this is how it looks like it's animating. And so let's just take a quick look here. So there is this. And so what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like without the clear function. So you can kind of get an idea of why the clear function is necessary. So I'm going to clear out this clear function. I'm just going to clear this. Okay, So I just put two dashes in front of it. And then if I click Save and play and Run, you'll see what happens. And you can see what's happening when we clear it. It's clearing out all of these back ones. But because that clear function isn't there, it just keeps writing them over. So if this is what you're looking for, this kind of effect, that's all you have to do to change this down here, is to just get rid of the clear function. So that's how it looks to animate it with the clear function, and then how not to animate it. Or it's still animating it, I guess. But it's not getting rid of all of that's drawn behind it. And then it just keeps drawing over the top. And so really what you want to do is you want to kind of experiment with this. Like I said, the code is on the learningengineer.com website. So if you want to take a look at that, you can. And if you have any questions, too, you can post them there. And if you need this, you can always get it from me as well. And my name is Michael Langdon, and this is HTML5 Animating Text. And if you have any questions or if I didn't explain something well enough, just let me know, and I'll see what I can explain to you. Have a great day. Bye.